Okay guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. Um, today I'll be talking about 10 things that I identified about Houston, Texas that are negative. Things you gotta consider before you think about relocating here. So today we're gonna talk about those 10 negative things and let's get into it. Okay guys, my name is Kevin Mangum. I'm a local realtor here in Houston, Texas. I talk any and everything Houston, Texas, and particularly Houston real estate. So if you would like to uh, keep up with our content that I provide for you, please hit that little notification bell so you can keep up with uh, different videos that I post, as well as please subscribe, please share the content that you think is valuable to your friends and family, whether they're relocating here to Houston or just want a, a more information about the Houston market in general inside the fourth largest city in the United States. So with that being said, today I'm gonna talk about 10 things that I believe are negatives, um, things that um, not only I think are negatives, but for my clients. Um, clients who are relocating from all parts of the globe and they find that are challenging. And let's kind of go with number one. And number one, um, not in a particular order of strength, just a list that I created um, based on just the things that we identified. And one is toll roads. We used to have over 128 uh, miles of toll roads. So when you think about being in the fourth largest city in America, you try to avoid traffic. You try to figure out ways, how can I get to point A to point B pretty quickly? And the fact that Houston is so big for its land mass, you're gonna need a car, you're gonna need a vehicle. So we got a big city. You got a big area, big metropolitan area. And so if you're trying to get from uh, Galveston to the Woodlands, yeah, you can go straight up 45, no problem. But you probably find that um, it's gonna be traffic, there's gonna be some delays, there's gonna be things that come with living in a city this, this massive. So you try to find shortcuts. So you find the toll roads. And they got different toll roads. You got West Park, you got Katy, you got Fort Bend, you got Hardy Toll Road, you got Sam Houston Toll Road. And it all varies in, in price, usually around $1.25, $1.75. Um, but before you know it, you're on a toll road and you're, you're, you're driving and you're not realizing, hey, you're steady going through the tolls. What, what I will tell you is this, the toll roads sometimes does cut out uh, traffic and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I use maps a lot, even when I know where I'm going, just because you never know when you're gonna run into a wreck. And that's the beautiful thing of technology. You have, you have the ability to kind of predict um, if you're gonna be sitting in traffic or if you can avoid traffic. It allows you to do that. So toll roads are something that you gotta expect if you're living in Houston. I share that with my clients. You know, if you're living in a busy area, an area where a lot of people are commuting from, like Energy Corridor near Katy, well, they got a couple of toll ways you can you can hop on, as well as the, the HOV lane, where usually you have to have two people in the car with you. But if you have a toll pass, you're able to get on the HOV and able to kind of navigate towards uh, the downtown area, as well as if you're on 45, you can navigate as well. So um, that's something to really consider when you're moving here to Houston, the toll roads and, and the cost of toll roads. Um, matter of fact, the cost, I can tell you, just give you an example. I think I was going to Katy a few times and I didn't think nothing of it. I just hop on the toll road and I just head west. And I go through like four tolls before I even get to my destination. And so I didn't realize how many times I was going to Katy and in a month I ended up spending close to like $300. And some of it was just because I'm, I'm comfortable going to toll roads. It's just easy. And then sometimes I just forget. I could have just went, you know, 45 to, you know, I-10. But either way, it's something you, you want to budget for if you plan on using the toll roads in which I would tell most people end up using toll roads anyway. So that's number one. Uh, number two is weather. Um, now Houston, just being honest, we're, we're near the coast, so we get a little bit of everything as far as the jet streams coming in the middle of the actual country. I mean, we're de dead in the middle, we're Midwest, but we're just south. So we get a little bit of everything for us weather. Now, a lot of people worry about the hurricanes, the natural disasters that uh, they see on TV. Now, um, I did some research because every time I hear people ask me about hurricanes and the dangers and floods and all that stuff, and I just kind of looked up and see how many hurricanes actually usually hit Houston in a given year uh, or in the time frame. So they say about every six years you get a hurricane to hit Houston, Houston area, which that ain't that bad. And to be brutally honest, we rarely even get any hurricanes that are significant damage. Do they, can they cause damage? Yes. Hurricanes are dangerous? Yes. But you know when they're coming. We usually get a little bit of information about hurricane season, obviously like the weatherman they're predicting. We don't know how accurate it's gonna be, but it gives you a, a sense of uh, direction of what could happen during the hurricane season. 
in which hurricane season starts, I believe, June and goes all the way to the end of September. So you have a little stretch where the weather's a little bit warmer, which the tropics uh, are usually heat up when the water heats up. Typically, you have a, a opportunity for hurricanes to come in and get stronger. A lot of people talk about Harvey. Harvey was a, a category four hurricane, but when it hit, it ended up being more of a three and it just kind of spent over this, this, the actual area, Houston area for a few days, which caused significant flooding. But typically, like I said, we, get, we do have our chances for hurricane and tropical storms, which you know in advance. And for the most part, um, we haven't had many hurricanes that have came in and had so much significant damage that you know, we took the impact like what happened um, with Katrina and, and New Orleans. We haven't had that. Also, with weather, you got to think heat. Houston is hot. No doubt about it. You're going to have a, 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 a sticky feel here in Houston sometimes because the humidity is very high. Compared to places that are known for heat like Arizona, Las Vegas, um, you know, Nevada area, that is a drier heat, which is hot for sure. But here in Houston, it's more of a sticky heat. It's, humidity wise. So I like to use this comparison all the time. You have Arizona. Arizona is more of a dry sauna. You can go in there, it takes a little while before you start feeling sweat, but it's hot, no doubt about it. Before you know it, you can be dehydrated just because you're not aware how hot it is. And then Houston, you have a wet sauna. You go in there and it like takes your breath away because of the moisture in the air. So um, Houston, you will have some really, really hot days, especially when we get toward where we're at right now in May. May is in the 80s, but as we get towards the end of May going into June, you just know it's going to be hot. Um, I tell people all the time, I wear golf stuff. I'm not a best golfer. I don't act like I, uh, I'm the best golfer. I like to play, but I like to wear golf. Uh, clothing because of it's good for the heat it's good for the moisture and so i'm a sweater just naturally and so i like to wear stuff that kind of you know can absorb my sweat but more importantly um keep me you know fairly cool um especially throughout my day so you got to be expecting the weather here in houston you can expect possibilities of hurricanes you also can expect the, the humidity and then you expect some rain um, houston for the most part i think we average more inches of rain than seattle not as many rain days but we get more inches of rain than Seattle. So I tell people, well, you can go and look at the weather and it says 60% chance, chance of rain. That means it's probably gonna rain, but they don't really tell you how long it's gonna rain for the most part. So you can go from having a storm rainy and then next thing you know, it's beautiful, sunny, and you're able to go out and enjoy your day because soon enough, the sun is gonna suck up most of the, the water anyway. So that's something to consider when you talk about the weather, if you're looking at Houston. The next thing is bugs. When I talk bugs, Every, every state, every city has its own fair share of bugs and bug problems. Here, it's more of like the mosquitoes. Like if you're a person coming down for the first time, especially this time of year when we start getting pretty hot and it rains, uh, mosquitoes come out. And when you're around a water that stands, uh, particularly around your house or in certain areas, mosquitoes will be an issue. So I tell people if you're going out, your, your family that likes to do outdoors or your kids play sporting events, please go get you some type of uh, off, some type of spray uh, that you can have on, readily on hand because the mosquitoes, they're like gang members. They are coming out of the woodworks to get you. So I personally make sure my yard, cause I got small kids and they like to go play in the yard. So we make sure we treat the yard to kind of prevent some of these uh, bugs, mosquitoes in particular, from just taking over. One of the other things I, I shared this on my last video, lizards like I, I can't stand them if, if there's a lot of bugs around you probably gonna have a lot of lizards they need something to feed off of and uh, they they will take over they're like the jurassic park man they're coming out of the woodworks and so i try to make sure i get i get as much done uh, at least once a quarter for as a treatment of my my yard to prevent some of the bugs and that that could take over your your, your household as well as some of the other areas you might frequent um, I always tell people, you will notice in the more metropolitan area inside the loop, you don't see as much of an issue for us like the, the bugs, um, particularly the mosquitoes. But as you go into the suburbs, you can definitely see um, the bug problem being an issue, especially uh, during the summertime and that, that time of year where we have a little bit more rainfall and wet season, things like that. But the next thing is property taxes. So 
I hear people to, uh, love coming to Texas because of the advantages for us, cost of living and affordability, which is right, it's great. It's affordable compared to a lot of uh, major cities, but you will have a little bit more higher property taxes than other cities. I think I did um, research, you'll see where uh, I think Houston is rated the sixth or uh, Texas is rated the sixth most, uh, the highest property tax uh, state in the United States. Um, some other states that are a little bit higher, I think Vermont, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, Illinois, those just to name a few, they'll have a little bit more higher property tax and have state income tax. Um, Texas don't have that. So with property taxes, what you find is typically if it's a subdivision that's fairly new, you're probably gonna have higher property tax because you know they have a um, mud tax, they gotta put the infrastructure in to support building out the subdivisions and things like that. But you can always fight it. You always can protest it. They got different companies that do it for you to help um, you know, really uh, keep your property tax down. Also, I tell everybody, file for homestead, especially if just, this is your main home, please file for homestead. They will save uh, you from having to pay a higher pro property tax. Usually they will keep it, keep the property tax at a cap each year around 10%, no more than 10%. So that's something that you definitely wanna do when you're thinking about buying a home. And we, we make sure we share that with our clients just so you know you relocate, you wanna make sure you have that information. And that'll kind of help with the property tax situation. But like I said, usually you'll find it being in the newer development areas, you'll find property taxes being a little higher because that supports the infrastructure and build out and things like that. So the next thing is lack of public transportation. Just to be honest with you, we don't have a whole lot. We have the Metro, which we have the Metro where you can just catch within uh, Houston proper. We have a Metro park and ride where you can park in most um, suburbs. They have an area where you can park your car and then you just hop on a Metro bus and it takes you into the main areas like uh, the medical center, downtown, so you don't have to drive, you can just kind of hop on the Metro within your area and the parking ride and you can get to some of the main areas. You have the Metro Rail that is pretty much within the same area, downtown, medical center. But other than that, we don't really have uh, public transportation. So if you're coming from a city like New York City and you're used to having public transportation or in Chicago, you won't get much public transportation here. You're gonna need a vehicle. So. Uh, you just need to, you know, put that in uh, consideration when you're thinking about moving to Houston. You're gonna have to get your car. You have to deal with all the other things we talked about for us, toll roads and things like that. But for the most part, public transportation is very limited. I know there's some different sites I read that was talking about possibly having some public transportation options for us and extending the Metro Rail and things like that, which could be, it could happen, but it is a challenge with the way Houston's infrastructure is. I don't I don't know if that's gonna happen, so just know you're gonna have need, need a vehicle to really get around and feel comfortable here in Houston, Texas. And then the next thing is deregulated utilities. So it's basically free game for anybody. I mean, you can go and hunt for your own utility as far as electric, electrical. Um, if you're looking for you know, lights, uh, your cable bill, all that stuff is free game. I mean, it's deregulated. So for the most part, it's up to you. You can shop around. I know a lot of people shop for electricity. Um, I know you see solar is a big thing right now that is uh, really um, taking over here in the Houston area. So there's no regulations around it. So it, it's one of those things where it can change with e each company. I know there's different companies you can use to shop around for electricity, but I, I can tell you, that's one of the challenges most people have. I try to just tell my clients, you know, just really do your research on what electric companies make sense. A lot of times you got these local Facebook groups within your subdivision that you can join and ask questions because, you know, everybody's going through the same problem. Everybody's trying to find a way to save money, man. So if you can figure out which electric company fits you and your family needs, please do so. But it is deregulated utilities. It's free game. Um, it's a free for all. I mean, Hey, I'll be honest, every time I look up, I'm getting a, somebody knocking on my door trying to sell me solar, uh, which is cool. It, it, it saves some people money. I'm not personally in, into having solar panels on my roof per se, but hey, if it makes sense for you and your family and save you some money, please do. But it's just something that you find here in Texas. It's like the wild, wild west. So you gotta figure out what makes sense for you, but there's no regulations around utilities. The next thing is crime. We live in the fourth largest city in the United States. So uh, ain't no way of sugarcoating it. You do have some challenges 
living here in Houston, Texas. Now, one thing I will say, the city has saw a drop in crime, I think about eight to nine percent in violent crimes. You know, I know other cities have their challenges as well, from New York to Chicago to LA. It just it happens. You can't, it's no way of avoiding it. But um, what I will tell you that property crime has went up by like 11%. And this is mostly Houston, I'm talking Houston proper, but Houston area in general. General, a couple of things that stands out is Cadillac converters. People still in Cadillac converters, like, there's no tomorrow. I don't care if you're in the, the nicest neighborhoods. Uh, for some reason, people, these people are making a lot of money off Cadillac converters. And I know the city of Houston, as well as the just the local authorities around the surrounding areas have talked about the crackdown on Cadillac converters, making sure people understand that if they're stealing, they're gonna take a huge penalty. And so one thing you gotta think about as a homeowner, as someone who own, you have your own property, just being smart about it. Uh, you have cameras, have things that prevent things from happening, be a deterrent. But at the end of the day, I mean, people wanna commit crimes. I, I can tell you from, being in uh, areas that is really nice. Uh, I, I live in a pretty nice area and people still do little petty crimes. Nothing major, no no major assaults and things like that, but from time to time you will have you know crimes. And so just understand being in the fourth largest city, you will get that. But the numbers have uh, dramatically went down on violent crimes, which is always good to hear. And hopefully we'll continue to see some, some headway with lowering crime of just you know property being stolen and things like that. Obviously that has went up because of growth within the city. You have seen population growth, so sometimes you get some of that as well as your city continues to uh, you know, grow. So next thing is homelessness. So I brought up homelessness because one of the things that I realized, um, I think I was taking my family after church, we were going eat over by the Galleria and my kids noticed that it was a lot of people with signs out and you know, of course, when you see people with signs out, you don't want to say, okay, they are homeless, but uh, it was, north of like 20 people holding signs and homelessness was uh kind of out of hand at one point it was it was very very apparent that houston has uh, became one of those cities that's known for homelessness i think if you go if you could ride under 45 going north and you can see like just tent it was like just tents and tents and tents of people who were homeless and so the city has done something about that, trying to minimize that. I think since 2011, over 25,000 people have been put into some type of housing, whether it's apartments, whether it's homes. So 63% uh, of homelessness have went down. That's a good thing, but it's still some homelessness issues that's still out there. And that, that, unfortunately, that's something that happens in a lot of major cities. I know you can go to LA, uh, Skid Row, you got other places that have their own challenges with homelessness, but the city has tried to do different things to, you know, try to keep that down. But you will, I'll just tell you, if you go to certain places like Midtown, I took my family to eat in Midtown. We do park in a car, you have someone that's walking around and you can tell they're homeless. So you gotta know your areas, you gotta know that that could happen. For the most part, never had any issues. You will see some in downtown as well. So, you know, it's just something to think about. If you're from a rural area and not used to that, it happens usually in, especially Houston proper. When you get to, towards the suburbs, you really don't see it. I can tell you, I rarely see it. I might see a few people that are trying to you know, maybe get some money or something like that. But for the most part, I don't really see uh, the tents and people living on the bridges and things like that in the suburbs. But when you get into the metro area, it is pretty frequently that you can run to pockets where it's a good amount of homelessness in those areas. So just something for you to, you know, be aware of. Um, the next thing is construction. So the one thing about Houston, because it's a, such a massive city, it's such a, a city that's known for growth, a city that is driving your car. It's a city that, you know, you gotta drive your car. And with that being said, with the population growth, the, we gotta spam, we gotta have the infrastructure to support it. So Houston is always under construction, always. So like I-10 uh, West, going Katy and going to Brookshire, they're wide net road because of the growth out in Katy area, Katy and Fulcher area. So you can expect delays when you're going I-10. I-45 from Galveston all the way up to towards 69 now. It used to be 59, it's now 69 now, which is crazy. Their construction there. And those type of construction projects, they last for a long time. So this construction project will be probably into 2024. So just know when you move to Houston, 
you're gonna deal with some delays. You're gonna deal, deal with some road constructions. They're always working on roads, but in a way it's good because of they're dealing with the population growth. And so you just need to know, hey, use your maps. I tell people all the time, use your maps, take advantage of it, take advantage of technology so you can avoid some of these pitfalls of traffic and delays that could you know, have you late for you to work or kids games and things like that. The next thing, last thing is pollution. Um, look, Houston is known for energy, which energy comes with, you know, oil and gas, refineries, things like that. And so we're we're pretty polluted type city, especially with the ozone being, our ozone layer being a little bit more challenged because it feeds with the sun and all that type of stuff. I'm not saying I'm some type of science guy, I'm not, but you will have some issues as far as pollution here in the, the Houston area. One thing I always uh, remind people is, you know where the plants are at, the refineries are at, most of them on the east uh, side of, of Houston or south. So you want to kind of be aware if you're thinking about buying a home in those areas because those areas are going to be a little bit more uh, polluted than others just because of the proximity of where the actual refineries and plants are located. Now, obviously, those plants and refineries, are, they help boom our economy. They help make our economy stable. So there's some challenges with having, but it also helps in a lot of ways, especially when you talk about the job market here in Houston being such a big attraction for a lot of people. A lot of people have made you know, a significant amount of money um, working in an industry, providing for their family and things like that. So it is some challenges with being here in Houston and being, you know, air quality not being the best. I think it was a, a site called Guardian and Guardian ranked Houston of the sixth worst U.S. city as far as uh, pollution in the United States. So we're not number one, but we're six. So it, it is some challenges with that. But those are the 10 things that I hear from a lot of my clients, 10 negative things that I and my clients, and I just say my clients, we um, have found as uh, challenges for being in the Houston area. But you have challenges, but you also have some positives. So in one of my next videos, if you please like and subscribe, I will talk to you about some of the positives of living here in the Houston area. Things that I personally think are positive as well as some of my clients. You know, I try to survey them, try to get an idea of what's really going on and what they feel about when they relocate here to the Houston market. So, but if you have any questions, if you like what I share with you, please like and subscribe. Please give us a call, text, email, whatever the best way to contact us or you. We'd love to help you with um, your relocation here to Houston area. Or if you just have questions and you just want to talk real estate, we'd love to help you out. So you guys have a blessed day. We look forward to talking to you soon. God bless.